Hello, my name is John Newman. I'm the director of the analytical lab here at Physical Electronics. Today I would like to talk to you about the Phi 710 scanning Auger nanoprobe instrument that we have fitted with a variety of different uh, additional techniques uh, used for advanced materials characterization. Besides the traditional Auger and scanning electron microscope uh, SEM feature on the Auger system, we also are, are adding energy dispersive X-ray spectroscopy, or EDS, backscatter electron microscopy, BSE, electron backscatter diffraction, EBSD, and finally a focused ion beam, or FIB, so that we can do in situ cross-sectioning of samples. As an agenda today, I would like to first describe the analytical options on the 710. Uh, including the OJ, the EDS, BSE, EBSD, and the FIB, and then look at the complementary nature of the techniques and uh, through a few different applications. The electron beam sample interaction chart shown here nicely demonstrates the complementary nature, at least in terms of the depth of analysis of these different options. We can see the OJ electrons are coming from the top few atomic layers, 40 to uh, I'm sorry, 4 to 50 angstroms in depth. The secondary electrons are coming from that same region plus a little bit deeper, coming from say 10 to 100 nanometers deep. We have the backscattered electrons and those are used for the BSE and EBSD techniques. And finally we have the characteristic X-rays produced from electron beam bombardment that are coming from say half a micron to three microns in depth depending on the beam energy that you're using and the the material that you're analyzing. Looking at the Auger technique, the, uh, this is a UHV technique where we're using a finely focused uh, field emission electron beam as the excitation source and we're analyzing very low energy electrons coming from that as the analytical signal, typically less than 3 kV in energy. Auger is extremely surface sensitive coming from the top 5 nanometers or so and it detects all elements above helium. The spatial resolution for in the SEM mode on the 710 is 3 to 4 nanometers, whereas in the Auger electron spectroscopy mode we're looking at about 8 nanometers spatial resolution. Auger in general is used for determining elemental and chemical composition of very small features, say larger than 20 nanometers or so, as well as for looking at thin films. It can analyze insulating materials, although it can be challenging at times, and, and you can do that without adding conductive coatings because now we are using uh, low, energy ion, I'm, yes sir, uh, low energy ion neutralization for uh, charge compensation. And finally by adding a in situ uh, inert gas ion beam we can combine the OJ with the ion beam for either sputter cleaning of samples or obtaining compositional depth profiles. And here's the type of Auger data that you obtain uh, on the instrument. In the upper left we see we have an SEM image, uh, one micron field of view, so a very small feature. And we can put points uh, or areas on this area of interest and collect Auger data. Here we see we have four different points that were analyzed showing different elements in the different point locations. We can map out the distribution of those elements that we find in the survey spectra in the lower right, we, we have an Auger map showing a variety of different elements located on this inclusion. And finally, in the lower left, we see we can add the argon ion beam to the Auger analysis and do a compositional depth profile, in this case looking at a, a copper thin film on top of a, oxygen, a silicon oxide. For EDS, we're, this is again using the electron beam as the primary source, so the electron beam that we use for Auger, and we're analyzing characteristic X-rays as the analytical signal. The depth of analysis is much, much deeper than it is for Auger. Now we're looking at tenths of microns to microns in depth, depending again on the beam energy that you use. The, the one beauty of, of EDS is that it were, uh, it's a parallel detection type of system, so the acquisitions are quite rapid. So you can do them quicker than you can for Auger uh, acquisitions, typically. It, uh, EDS detects all elements above helium, and in general it's used for determining the elemental composition of smallish kind of features and thin films, as well as bulk materials. In the lower right we see, I'm sorry, lower left we see that we have a SEM image of a corroded steel pipe 
with a 200 micron field of view, so a larger field of view than we had for the Auger example earlier. And in the middle we have the EDS spectrum obtained from that uh, steel pipe. And we see the, the expected chromium and iron present from the steel, and we also have oxygen and sulfur showing up. We can map out the spatial distribution of those elements in the right lower right there um, very nicely, similar to what you can do for Auger imaging. Another technique that we have on the instrument is backscatter electron detection. And backscatter electrons again use the same excitation source, field emission source that we use for Auger, but now we're looking at the backscattered uh, electrons as the analytical signal. Higher Z or atomic uh, number elements backscatter more strongly than lighter elements and they show up brighter in the BSE images. And so you can use this BSE detector as a, a relative compositional imaging tool. Uh, you can't tell what elements are present there, but you can tell if there are different elements that are present there. The BSE detector also has four different uh, detectors on it, and you can operate them in pairs. And by subtracting the information, you can get some topographical information. You can then compare the relative composition maps to the topographical images and get some insight into the material properties uh, and how they relate to the topography. In the example we have here on the left is an SEM image showing again primarily topography in a one millimeter field of view, quite large area. And the backscatter image on the right shows uh, that there's, it's relatively uniform except for some dark patches that are present in specific locations. And again, the BSE isn't telling you what elements are present there, but telling you that there's some different elements or Z elements uh, that are located. And uh, it's in this case, uh, there were some carbon contamination regions on this particular pyrite sample. Another technique is EBSD, or backscatter diffraction. And this is a microstructural crystallographic characterization technique. Again, we're using the same electron beam as we are for Auger, but now we're looking at the backscatter and diffracted electrons as the analytical signal. The depth of analysis and the spatial resolution is on the order of tens to hundreds of nanometers in size, so larger than that for, for Auger, but still relatively small. And it's used to study crystalline or polycrystalline materials. Uh, it doesn't give you any information for amorphous materials. But you can determine things like the phase, the crystal orientation, the grain size and shape, the strain, as well as grain boundary misorientations of materials. Typically, you combine the EBSD with another analytical tool like EDS or, or Auger analysis because many compounds have identical crystalline structures, meaning they give the same diffraction patterns in the EBSD, but they have different elemental compositions, and so you can identify them with either EDS or, or Auger. Conversely, many materials have identical compositions, such as, say, quartz and, and glass, but they have different crystalline structures, so you can identify what they are by EBSD. In the example we have here in the lower left, we have an SEM image uh, of a welded copper alloy cross-section. And in the right, we have what's called an inverse pole figure from the EBSD analysis. And you can see a couple different things very clearly with the EBSD. First, we can see the, the size and shapes of the grains. We see that near the top, we have much larger grains than we do as we get near the middle of this image. And um, you also see in this inverse pole figure the crystalline planes that are facing up. We see primarily reds and blues, which indicate that it's the 001 and the 111 faces that are facing up. This type of information is very important for, for determining uh, structural integrity of, of welds like this. And finally, we have our focused ion beam that we could add onto the Auger system. This uses a different beam besides the electron beam that's used for Auger. We're now using a finely focused liquid metal ion gun using gallium for in situ site-specific cross-sectioning of very small features and thin films. And you can easily locate these defects and, and cross-section them. Um, in this case, we're, uh, we're using a, the FIB to cross-section a tungsten silicide coated uh, wafer that had a defect on it, roughly a 10 micron defect shown here in the, in the left picture. And then in the middle we see the, after it's been cross-sectioned, we see a very nice smooth surface obtained as we cut through this particle or defect. 
We then did Auger analysis on this uh, cross-section defect and we, we see that there's a very thin submicron layer of carbon present between the uh, tungsten silicide coating and the silicon substrate below. So now we'll look at a few different examples of how we can combine these different techniques and, and provide complementary information. The first example we have is a manganese sulfide inclusion in carbon steel where we use both EDS and OJ to analyze these, uh, these defects. And we first use EDS to rapidly locate and identify these manganese sulfide inclusions because they're not everywhere on the sample surface. But you can map out the surface uh, with EDS and very quickly find these inclusions. And you can do analysis on them. We see in the left-hand panel we have an EDS spectrum of one of these inclusions, roughly a micron in size or, or submicron in size, I guess. And we can see that there is manganese and sulfur present as well as we do get a large signal for iron, but uh, odds are that this iron is primarily coming from the surrounding area outside of the inclusion because of the large excitation volume of EDS. In the right we have our OJ analysis of the same defect and we can see that we have the same elements present. We have the manganese, sulfur, and iron. We also see that there's a, a substantial amount of copper that's present that we did not see in the EDS analysis and we can map out the location of these different elements that we find in OJ and we can see that there is definitely iron present within that inclusion and we also see it's a relatively uniform distribution of manganese, sulfur, and copper present uh, in, the, in the manganese, sulfur inclusion. We can then combine a inert gas ion beam with the OJ analysis and do a compositional depth profile. In this case we profiled to see how thick that copper layer was on the inclusion and we see that it's only about oh, roughly 120 angstroms thick, so a very thin layer and that's why the EDS did not detect the copper present on the surface. This next example we're using a combined OJ, EDS, EBSD approach Again, it's a manganese sulfur sulfide inclusion in the steel, and we can see that uh, in the SEM image we have a long, uh, looks like a crack almost here, uh, and that's the inclusion. Often these inclusions are very long and stringy. From the EDS maps, we see that the sulfur and the manganese uh, very nicely uh, are, are located just within this inclusion. We then compare that to the OJ data, and we see the manganese uh, gives a very similar map to the EDS, but now the sulfur is not only present in the, in the defect, but also it, it's spread out from there and it's reacting with the surrounding iron. And interestingly, you see that very clearly in the SEM image where you get these dark regions where the sulfur is diffusing out into the iron. We combine this with EBSD in this particular example and in the upper right you can see the inverse pole figure showing the grains that are present and the different uh, uh, crystalline faces that are facing up and you can see that there's a mixture of, of the different planes present. Uh, we get the red, green, and blue all indicating different planes facing up. More importantly on this sample EBSD can be used to determine where this, the maximum strain is on the surface and it, uh, you can use this then seeing that it's following these inclusions. This helps predict where localized corrosion would take place if the surface was exposed to a corrosive medium. The final example is a coated aluminum sample that um, in this case the, the coating was thick enough that Auger couldn't see through it or in, in most cases and you couldn't see the aluminum below the coating whereas in EDS you can clearly see the, the strongest signal is aluminum, but you also detect carbon, oxygen, iron, magnesium, and silicon. And you can map out the location of these different elements and you can very easily see in, the, in this diagram the location of the iron and silicon. And it, it, so then you can take this information, locate where one of these inclusions is, and do a FIB cross-section of it. And here we have a, a SEM image in the upper left showing one of these, uh, you can barely see it, an inclusion here and nicely fibbing through that inclusion and then doing analysis of it. In this case we did Auger analysis because some of these uh, inclusions were quite thin. We have two different examples here. We have a particle A that's almost like a, a thin pancake type of inclusion 
where it's submicron in size. And then we have another enclosure that's more of a rounded type of feature, um, roughly about a micron in size. You can do Auger spectroscopy on these cross-section surfaces, and here's a point spectrum on one of these inclusions, confirming the presence of the iron and the silicon. Here's a photo of one of the 710 Auger instruments with a variety of the different techniques on it. Uh, the Auger uh, analyzer and electron beam are located on the top up here. In the front of the instrument, uh, as it's facing us, is the argon sputter gun for compositional depth profiling and surface cleaning. Below that, we have the EBSD detector. Off to the right, we have the EDS and the SEM scintillator below that. The stage manipulator is shown on the left here, and above that is a, a port where the fib would go. We don't actually have a fib on this, in this photo. On the back side of the instrument would be where the BSE detector is located. Besides the techniques, analytical techniques that I've talked about, you can also add a, a fracture or parking stage for in situ fracturing of metallographic samples inside the instrument, and that'll give you information on things like grain boundary diffusion. And we also have an option of adding a vacuum or inert gas transfer vessel so that you can take samples from, say, a glove box or another instrument and transfer them into the 710 without exposing the sample to air. At this point, I'd like to stop and thank you for your attention.